The tobacco habit, its evil and its cures, 1872. The evils of the tobacco habit and the methods for its cure are found to be highly successful if followed constantly, reinforced by a sincere desire to be free from it. By Paschal, Beverly Randolph, 1825-1875. Paschal Beverly Randolph, physician, philosopher, world traveler, supreme grandmaster of the fraternitas Rosicrucis, high art of Elvis, and the Anseria, member of the Lord du Lys of France, the double eagle of Prussia, and order of the Rose of England, was born in the city of New York, October 8, 1825. When in 1872, 84 years ago, Dr. P.B. Randolph, Supreme Grand Master of the Rosicrucian Fraternity in America, first published his book Soul, The Soul World, he included in it, among other subjects, his treatise on the tobacco habit. At that period, little thought had been given to tobacco and the harm that it might result from it, and there naturally was a great deal of scoffing, even among the medical profession at his trade against it. Times have changed since then. More and ever more physicians are, who are given thought to and investigation the effects of the tobacco habit are being forced to agree with much that Dr. Randolph then said and published. Moreover, Moreover, so certain are many medical specialists that it is cause of numerous diseases that they will not accept as patients those with serious afflictions as long as they are victims of the habit in any form. So great has become the demand for Dr. Randolph's treaties that the Philosophical Publishing Company has agreed to tissue, excuse me, to issue it in the present pamphlet form, and we trust that the instructions contained herein will be helped to many who seek freedom from the habit. R. Swinburne Clymer, The Tobacco Evil. After this book, Soul World, was all in type, as I sat one night in my office deploring my loneliness, a vision of the three great curses of the Christian and Islamic world passed before the eyes of my soul. Lust, rum, and tobacco. Bad, worse and worse. In some sense, because the last en engenders, in some sense, because the last engenders, fosters and strengthens the two first, I saw filing along the roads of life such a vast army of bounden slaves to all three tyrants, such an enormous multitude of victims to the grossest of all appetites, that I shuddered at the awful sight. All these countless myriads of immortal human beings were insane, insane, because they willingly and abject slaves of a power which they all know and can safely swear is daily injuring them, soul, mind, body, and morales. Men know that men know the right and well approve it too. They know the wrong and yet they wrong pursue. And I ask my soul, can nothing be done to break these gibes? Is there no word of counsel though canst give mankind before their flight to? The lands beyond, the swelling flood, the kingdoms or the sea? To assist in to assist it in dethroning this tobacco king, the usurper of all human prerogatives, this usurper of all human prerogatives, this conscienceless slayer of consciousness, consciences, this wholesale poisoner of unborn babies, this has loudly crowed over his millions of victims, this maker of drunkards, this seducer of female innocence, this builder and peopler of brothels this insidious, silent, wily, and successful tempter to the bad. This breaker down of human honor, stifler of emotion, scourge of man, contemner of God, laughter at religion, mocker at human agony, scoffer at all things pure and holy, reviler of the cross and what it symbolizes, this snake whose coils once wound round a man proved cords stronger than ten billion hempen cables. Ha <laughs> ten billion hempen cables. Cannot something be said for man and against the subtle fiend? There can, there shall, even these be their fiend. Oh, excuse me, even if these be the last lines ever written by thy hand upon the green soil of this godly but sadly abused earth of gods, this young nursery of human souls, thus it was suggested to me that I add a paper, not of but on tobacco, which is probably one of the greatest curses that ever afflicted humankind. For its use is not wholly confined to the sterner sex, but it also curses gentle women, not only obliquely but directly. For besides the simple cigarette between the coral lips of Spanish Dane and the hot, the hot tonesses of our own proud land, many a whiff of a good cigar, 
polished mere sham, briar, wood, and democratic clay, Zadheen, is taken by thousands of women who are not suspected of such habits, but who keep a pipe hidden away where they know, and they only. Snuff taking and snuff dipping is not an uncommon habit with women whose, whom troubles assail, and even the habit of chewing is not a strange one to many, a mother and sister in this our Yankee Israel. Tobacco appetites where we at? Tobacco appetites are born with us for the reason that one of both our parents' bodies and souls too are, to a greater or less extent, saturated with the weed. Which saturation, having gone on from generation to generation through, and in and by generation, the natural and inevitable consequence is just what might be expected. We take to the weed, as ducks do to water, with most astonishing ease and avidity, and speedily become so saturated by it in turn that we have no difficulty whatever in handing down the appetite for, to, for it to the next generation. Of course, with an increment of force and power greater and intenser from cumulative energy. The Americans chew, smoke and snuff, while other people are content generally to kill themselves with tobacco by a slower process and either snuff or smoke themselves away. It is no part of my intention here to enter into a long discussion of the effects of the weed upon their bodies, spirits, intellects, morals, morales, or souls of those of us who use it, but to give hope and courage and point out the road of deliverance to whose have been of their own free will by stress or early bad example, or by inherited bias, been around, been bound hand and foot, soul and body, by the stinking yet charming demon. Says a high authority, He who doeth not smoke hath either known no great griefs, or refuseth himself the softest consolation, next to that which comes from heaven, what, softer than woman? whispers the young reader young reader women teases as well as consoles women makes half the sorrows which she boasts the privilege to soothe women consoles us it is true while we are young and handsome when we are old and ugly women snubs and scolds us on the whole then the woman in this scale the weed in that jupiter hang out thy balance and weigh them both and if they'll give the present and if they'll give the preference to the woman, all I can say is, the next time Juno ruffles thee, O oh Jupiter, try the weed. <laughs> Where are we at? And yet the man, Bulwer, who wrote those very words, would, I doubt not, give half his income to be well rid of his true consoler, for notwithstanding its admitted charm, it is incontestably a grievous curse to whoever uses it in any way, shape, or manner. There's not the slightest doubt about the matter. Hence, whatever will effectually annul the appetite must be hailed with joy by millions who desire to break their chains and be forever free. For such then, I wrote additional section to one of my works, The Soul World and the World of Souls, and also shall publish it in pamphlet form for the benefit of such as may not have or procure the larger work. Wherever tobacco is used, there's always trouble in that family, with that man, that woman, this husband, the other wife, and among all, and with whom ever, with whom's ever uses it, be thy male or female, old or young, yet physiologists nor doctors can tell you the reason why. If a man chews tobacco, I don't care if he is five times converted, or a minister of the gospel ten times over, that man won't do to tie as, to as husband or lover. That man won't do to tie as husband or lover. Why? Because of tobacco. Of all other things on earth. Wine and whiskey not accepted totally and fully antagonizes the love element of the human soul. And I defy the whole wide world to produce me a man, old or young, rich or poor, Republican, banker, or Democratic mechanic who uses tobacco and is healthy in either liver, kidneys, heart, bladder, or any organ of the pelvic this area. It cannot be done. The man who does not live on earth who, not being wholly robbed of all the elements of a genuine physical manhood, is sounded either physically, mentally, or morally in the affectional departments of human nature. Why is it because of the nicotine's poison?